Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World, and today we're going to be focused on books. No unboxing today, just books. So this was my favorite book on my October reading list of this year, 2018, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This is an amazing book. This book I could read again easily. You get to know the characters so well and you become so involved with them and you really care about them, at least I did. So this is definitely a great book that I would recommend to anyone. Let me pull up my computer here and give you a little bit of information on the book. As I said before, it was written by Marcus Zusak, published in 2005. It's 552 pages, so a lot of pages. Amazon gave it 4.6 stars out of 5. Goodreads, 4.36 stars out of 5. The genre is historical fiction, coming of age, war, drama. I will read you a little description I found somewhere. I don't know if I found it in the book, if I found it on one of the reading websites, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. It's 1939 Nazi Germany. The country is holding its breath. Death has never been busier and will be busier still. By her brother's graveside, Liesel's life is changed when she picks up a single object partially hidden in the snow. It's the gravedigger's handbook. Left behind there by accident, it's her first act of book thievery. So begins a love affair with books and words. Soon she is stealing books from Nazi book burnings, the mayor's wife's library, wherever books can be found. The years that I found that this book took place were 1939 to 1942. What's surprising about this book is who narrates the book. It's death. And I like death in this book. I know we all picture him like this guy carrying a, a sickle and being harsh and murderous. That's not the case. In this book, death, he collects the souls of those who have died. He doesn't cause their demise, but he helps them when they get to that point to go wherever they need to be. I found him to be compassionate and caring. Death is not supposed to get involved with the living, is how I felt as he was describing things happening in his world. But every once in a while, he'd be attracted to someone so strongly that he would have to keep checking on them. So he tells a story of Liesel, of Liesel's friends, of Liesel's stepfamily, and all of their interactions with all the events that are going on around them. I'm going to read you a few quotes by Death. His soul sat up and it met me. Those kinds of souls always do, the best ones, the ones who rise up and say, I know who you are and I'm ready. Not that I want to go, of course, but I will come. Those souls are always light because more of them have been put out. More of them already have found their way to other places. Another one is, one opportunity leads directly to another, just as risk leads to more risk, life leads to more life, and death to more death. I have to say that although it broke my heart, I was and still am glad I was there. Death is so compassionate in this book. He would be a good friend. <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite quotes. I don't know why. The words were on their way, and when they arrived, she would hold them in her hands like the clouds, and she would wring them out like the rain. Something really beautiful about that quote. I thought character development was exceptional in this book. You feel like you know Liesel and her friends and her new family. You, you see the good and the what I would call evil of that time. Liesel has a best friend, Rudy. Uh, their relationship is just precious. You, you really learn to love him and you hear the story of their relationship and how it grows. Hans is Liesel's new, I guess foster dad is what he is. Hans is the kindest, gentlest soul. I don't think I've ever met anybody like Hans. Then you have Rosa, her foster mom, and she seems to have a really gruff exterior. She seems quite harsh, but you later learn inside she's quite the opposite. They also have a man that they are hiding in their basement, a Jewish man. His name is Max, and Liesel and Max develop a unique relationship. When Liesel first came to her new foster home, she had brought the Gravedigger's Handbook with her, but she didn't know how to read. Hans soon found the book, realized she couldn't read, and he wasn't that great at reading, but they learned to read together in the basement. He made her this really, he made walls with letters, and she would put words on the walls, and they had, and they had an amazing relationship. Liesel, her love was the written word and books. Hans, he loved everybody, but his 
but one of his loves was music. He played the accordion. There's a whole story about how he acquired that accordion in this book. During air raids, when all the neighbors would gather in what they were, thought were secure basements, they were terrified, of course. You could hear the bombs overhead, and they didn't know if they were going to live or die. So it's interesting that both Hans and Liesel had a way to comfort the people. Liesel would read books as a distraction. She would read books and people became focused on that rather than hearing all the, the bombs and the planes. And Hans would play his accordion and the music would comfort people. I did watch the movie after reading the book and the, the movie does stand on its own. It's really good. You don't have to read the book to get a lot out of the movie. And as usual, the movie lacks all the detail that you would get in the book. You don't get to know the characters quite so well. But I thought the movie was really good too. I would recommend that. This book got a five per five on my reading scale and I definitely recommend that you read it. It's an amazing book. It's one that will stay on my bookshelf and I would definitely recommend to others. Thanks for joining me for my book review and I hope to see you again soon here on my YouTube channel. Take care. Bye-bye.